The deadline passes and the Rowan County clerk refuses to budge. I'm Sam Dick. Team coverage of what's next here in Rowan County. And while the battle between Kim Davis and couples plays out here in Kentucky, the case is getting national attention and help. We are learning a lot more about a McCreary County woman killed in a bizarre accident in a McDonald's parking lot. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. A confrontation in Rowan County. A county clerk defies court orders by refusing to issue marriage licenses. Good afternoon to you. It was decision day for Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis after a temporary stay allowing her to not issue marriage licenses expired at midnight. And when couples showed up this morning, she still refused to issue the licenses. Our Sam Dick begins our top story team coverage. He's live in Rowan County where people have been gathering all day, some protesting and some in support of Davis. Sam, where does this case now go? Good evening, Amber. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis has a date in court on Thursday, about an hour's drive from Moorhead in Ashland, before federal judge David Bunning at 11 a.m. Not only is she required to be there, but I understand her six deputy clerks are also supposed to be there as well for this hearing. The judge will also hear from same-sex couples on Thursday morning. She could face fines. Uh, we do know that. Today, just minutes after opening her office for business, Davis faced off with same sex couples. Did God, God tell you to do this? I asked you all to leave. You are interrupting my You can call the police if you want us to leave. You can call the police. I pay your salary. I pay your salary. I pay you to discriminate against me right now. That's what I'm paying for. After the confrontation this morning, we learned this issue, as I said, will be going back to court. Kim Davis and her deputy clerks, as I said, have been summoned to federal court. Attorneys for couples who want to get married filed a request today asking Judge David Bunning to hold Davis in contempt of court. Bunning is the same judge that has already ordered Davis to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. If he does hold her in contempt of court, that means he thinks she is not obeying the order of the court issued two weeks ago. The judge could do a number of things if he finds her in contempt of court. He could send her to jail or he could order her to pay a fine. The hearing is set for Thursday morning at 11 in federal court in Ashland. While the showdown between Davis and the couples wanting marriage licenses continues here in Kentucky, people from across the nation are waiting to see how this all plays out. WKYT Washington, D.C. correspondent Alex Miller is in the nation's capital where several groups have taken an interest in this very case. While the fight between Kim Davis and couples trying to get marriage licenses is heating up in Kentucky, this case is getting national attention and national help. The ACLU is defending the couples who have sued Davis, and Davis is being represented by the Liberty Council, a nonprofit law firm fighting for religious freedom. Founding attorney Matthew Staver is no stranger to these fights. He argued at the Supreme Court in 2005 in favor of displaying the Ten Commandments at the McCreary County Courthouse. Staver commented on the Davis case on his radio show earlier today. Kim Davis is a strongly uh, strong Christian. And uh, she believes, uh, like many Christians, uh, most Christians, and frankly most Americans, that marriage is between a man and a woman. And she is being forced to license something that is directly contrary to her core religious convictions and to the scriptures themselves. The ACLU says religious freedom can be taken into consideration in a government job, but not in this case. Not when it harms third parties like it is here, the couples who are being denied a fundamental right to marry. Um, and, and not when um, it means that you're not even, from per even performing the basic functions of your job. The ACLU is asking that a judge hold Davis in contempt for not doing her job, meaning she could face a slew of sanctions. The judge will hear that request Thursday, and interest groups in Washington will surely be paying attention. Reporting at the Supreme Court, Alex Miller, WKYT. Kim Davis's refusal to issue marriage licenses has thrown Moorhead, this whole community in Rowan County, into the national spotlight. Earlier, hundreds of supporters, uh, protesters and the media were here at the courthouse today. You can see the crowd in this video. Officer Don shot from Sky First. Our Sean Moody has more on what this national news story has done for the Moorhead community. 
the issue, of course, has come to a head over the past couple of days, but it's been a hot topic around Moorhead really ever since the Supreme Court decision earlier this summer. There are, of course, a lot of opinions around here. A few blocks from the demonstrators at the courthouse, there are still strong feelings. She has a right to her beliefs. She has a right to speak her mind. She doesn't have a right to be county clerk. Connie Ackerman said she thinks County Clerk Kim Davis needs to go ahead and start issuing those marriage licenses. Rowan County is, of course, getting nationwide attention because of the issue. Ackerman says it shows the rest of the country the wrong image. Well, I, you know, I feel bad that that's what we're known for now because it hasn't been that long ago that the city of Moorhead passed a fairness ordinance. A lot of people said they felt strongly about the issue, but a lot of them didn't want to share their thoughts publicly. I talked with people in a barber shop who said the discussion there earlier today got pretty heated. Back at the courthouse, David. Willoughby said he thinks this fight casts some positive light on the area. I think it's good that Round County stands up. I think you ought to stand up for what you believe in. I think that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, Connie Ackerman, the woman I talked to in that coffee shop, told me that while she doesn't like the way that the rest of the country is seeing Rowan County right now, she doesn't think it'll be a lasting image. In Rowan County, Sean Moody, WKYT. We've had several questions come in from the uh, viewers out there into our newsroom today about this whole issue. For example, why hasn't Kim Davis been removed from office? Well, here's the answer we have for you. Since she's an elected official, it's not that easy. We talked to a UK clinical professor of law who says the Kentucky Supreme Court can remove a clerk for failure to do their constitutional or statutory duty. A vacancy in the office of the county clerk is filled by the county judge executive or by the mayor until a successor is elected. Even if Davis is criminally charged, she still will not be removed from office immediately. Nothing would happen until her case makes its way through the courts. So much more to come. You can also visit WKYT.com for updates and to see the raw video of this morning's confrontation between Davis and one of the couples asking for a marriage license. We also have posted a statement from Kim Davis herself on our website. So again, Kim Davis and her deputy clerks have a date with a federal judge Thursday at 11 a.m. I asked a county official, Amber, if the courthouse, at least the clerk's part of it, will be closed on Thursday morning when they're all in Ashland. He said, yes, I believe so, because she's taking her deputies with her. Much more to come on that as well. As this really affects this community, this official told me, you know what, no issue has divided this community like this one in recent years. Back to you. Sam, it certainly is playing out there on both sides. We will wait and see for Thursday. Thank you. She was devoted to her family and her faith, but a bizarre crash ended her life. Tonight, we are learning more about the McCreary County woman hit and killed outside a Knox County fast food restaurant. State police say 66 year old Norma Hicks was sitting outside the McDonald's in Corbin when she was hit by a truck. Police say as of now, that crash is being investigated as just an accident. Phil Pendleton talked to those who knew Hicks in a story. That's new at Words have been hard to come by for those trying to make sense of the tragedy that played out at what's normally just a casual place for eating out. Because we don't understand why things like this happen, but we do know that God said His way was higher than our way. Norma Hicks was killed after police say a pickup driven by 19 year old Aaron Potter entered the parking lot at a high rate of speed. Her family says they had just picked her up at Cumberland Falls State Park. They went to McDonald's and she was sitting outside on a bench when she was struck. We just try to hold one another up in times like this. Her family tells me that Norma Hicks was a good Christian. She always let her light shine. She was extremely outgoing, a very hard worker, and would help anyone. Hicks worked at Cumberland Falls as a cook for 19 years. She had been there long enough to retire, but she continued working because she, she liked her work. When she wasn't at church or at work, Hicks spent time with her sisters and caring for family. She had a good life, but she didn't have material things like a lot of people do, but she was happy. She was satisfied, and you could see that contentment when she would come into the church. A church that is now coming together to help a family reeling with many questions that at a time like this don't have many answers. In McCreary County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Well, again, state police are still investigating the accident and say as of now, no charges are being filed against the driver. 
Well, it is the first day of September, which may have you thinking fall, but the summer temperatures are fighting to stay. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at your forecast. They're putting up a pretty good fight. Yeah, they are. They've got a nice little one-two uh, punch going on out there right now. That's going to carry us right in through the rest of the week. Those temperatures mid to upper 80s across all of central and eastern Kentucky. We're not seeing a whole lot in the way of any scattered shower thunderstorm threat. Just a little popcorn stuff trying to go late this afternoon. I suspect, though, with an increase in clouds that are also showing up here on Defender from south to north, that's a little increase in some juice. So, a little better chance that we'll get in on some scattered showers and storms over the next few days. High pressure across. Parts of the southern Appalachian Mountains are going to retreat back to the northwest eventually as the week goes on. That's allowing that flow to come in from the western Gulf of Mexico. Look at the moisture supply coming up the Mississippi River there. And some of that will arc its way back into central and eastern Kentucky as we go deeper into tonight and certainly over the next few days. Out and about this evening, an isolated shower, thunderstorm threat. It is still humid as temperatures drop from the 80s through the 70s as we make our way into 11 o'clock this evening. Coming up, we'll talk about how a few more storms, Amber, will begin to join that summer party here in the first week of September. One person is dead after a crash early this morning. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Bourbon County. The crash happened around 8 on Jackstown Road in Paris. Deputies say 20-year-old Aaron Lyle's car went off the road and hit a fence. We're told Lyle was hit in the head by a piece of the fence. He was taken to UK Hospital where he died. In Madison County, a couple faces charges tonight after police say they were high on drugs while caring for a toddler. Last week, Berea police say they found a man in the bathroom of Valero. They they believe that man, 27 year old Robert Coney, had overdosed on drugs. In the parking lot of the gas station, they found a woman and toddler. The woman, 27 year old Katrina McKenzie, told police she had smoked marijuana and snorted a Percocet tablet. The man was taken to the hospital and later released. Both have been charged with public intoxication and endangering the welfare of a minor. That toddler was not hurt. And in Laurel County, three men have been arrested for trying to sell stolen items. The sheriff's office says Kenneth Gilbert. Adam Rourke and Daniel Rourke tried to sell a stolen utility trailer and a zero turn lawnmower. The trailer was stolen from a business in Laurel County, while the mower was stolen from Georgetown. Both were worth about $10,000. All three men have been charged with receiving stolen property. Republican candidate for governor Matt Bevin is using the standoff with same sex marriage to attack his opponent, Jack Conway. Bill Bryant has Bevin's thoughts on the legal battle in the bottom line. Good evening. Republican candidate for Governor Matt Bevin stepped back into the standoff involving same sex marriage today. Bevin's campaign issued a statement saying Attorney General Jack Conway, who is the Democratic nominee for governor, is refusing to defend the religious liberties of county clerks. Bevin proposes having marriage licenses recorded by a clerk's office, such as an auto lien is done, and not issued under the name of a clerk. Conway declined to appeal the original federal judge's ruling, striking down Kentucky. Kentucky's ban on same sex marriage. He said at the time he did not think an appeal would prevail, and he said it would be costly. <laughs> Governor Steve Bashir hired outside counsel to appeal to the Supreme Court. Since the appeal failed, the Commonwealth is responsible for the legal bills of both sides, which currently top $2 million, although Bashir is trying to get that lowered. Top state government appointees, including cabinet secretaries, would be required by law to visit far eastern and far western Kentucky under a bill proposed. Proposed in Frankfurt. Republican Kenny Imes of Murray's proposal would require an appointee to visit either Hickman or Fulton County in the west and Letcher, Martin, or Pike counties in the east. They would have to make those trips at their own expense. CBS News has been looking through the largest release to date of Hillary Clinton's emails while she was Secretary of State. She talks about all sorts of ongoing issues and wrote lots of casual notes in the 7,000 pages released late last night. There will be more on that. Coming up on the CBS Evening News. And State Senator Reginald Thomas of Lexington says he is working for final approval for a sound barrier between the quiet Meadowthorpe neighborhood and busy New Circle Road. A newsletter indicates Thomas has told residents it will get done. Bill Bryant, WKYT.
Churchill Downs is still celebrating after a record attendance at the Kentucky Derby this year. They are looking to keep that momentum going to make the greatest two minutes in sports even better. Today, Churchill Downs announced a plan to offer more premium seating. The $18 million plan will modernize the turf club with upgraded food and drink offerings, lounge seating, new in seat technologies, and new express elevators, all to enhance a unique experience. We're modernizing spaces, creating new experiences for customers. We're doing things like bringing some of the food and beverage uh, experience out into the customer space. The project increases premium seating by nearly 800 new seats, and all the work should be completed by the beginning of the spring meet.